Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, yes, we are back at it again. We're going to react to a Christian video. We're going to watch The Bible Project with their video simply titled God. After my last Trinity reaction video, I had plenty of my Christian viewers reach out to me and they let me know that Inspiring Philosophy's Trinity video isn't good at all, apparently. However, the Bible project produces good content and explains the Trinity way better. I'm still open-minded. I'm going to continue with this work if you want me to, if you want me to react to those videos. However, please post in the comment section what I should react to next. All right, guys, with no further ado, let's have a look. So I've got a question that's always bothered me. The Bible says there's one God, but in other parts of the Bible, God is three, Father, Son, and Spirit. How can it be both? Yeah, this yeah, I don't think that this is what the Bible claims at all. The Bible claims there is one God, and then the church fathers claim that God is three in one. This is a question Let's that has honest. mystified people for thousands of years. And while we yeah. can't fully explain it, I think we can better understand what it is that we can't fully understand. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, think of it this way. Here's a two-dimensional plane. And then here's an object with three dimensions that's going to pass through the 2D plane. Okay, right. From this perspective, the 3D objects above and below the plane. So now it makes sense. But imagine you were a 2D person stuck on the 2D plane. What would you see? I don't know. What would I see? Well, it would look like this. Oh, yeah, okay. From this perspective, it looks impossible. It's one object, and then, then two objects, and then three. But in reality, they're all one, just not in a way you're capable of understanding. All right, so you want to tell me that God is a pyramid? Now, let's take this whole thing it? as a visual analogy for how we experience God. The claim in the Bible is that God is transcendent. But do you really experience God like this? When you pray to God, do you experience God as three in one? A divine being through Let's whom be we live and move and have our being. Or as God says, I am. Okay, but I live here in this universe, so when God appears, it will make sense in some ways, but in other ways, it will break my categories. Exactly. This happens all the time when people encounter the God of the Bible. Yeah, exactly. God is beyond all human conceptualizations, and this is literally what you're trying to do. Three-dimensional, four-dimensional, two-dimensional, one-dimensional. God is beyond all dimensions. But let's look first at how this happens. Even the Bible says this. Scriptures. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, God appears in <coughs> complicated ways that don't quite fit our categories. One common way this happens <laughs> is with God. Yeah, how could that be? So, the original scripture doesn't show him as a trinity, and that goes against your conceptualization. Do you notice something? God's attributes. So an attribute is a way to describe what something is like. For yeah. example, a soccer ball is round. Right or God is wise. Yeah, great, let's take God's wisdom. Oh, this is so, so the book of Proverbs- It's very cringy, this video. Says that God created the world by his wisdom. But then there okay. are also poems in the book of Proverbs that describe God's wisdom as a person, a coworker through whom God architected the universe. So God's attribute becomes a separate character? Yeah, this also happens with God's glory, which sometimes appears as a human figure on a throne that's engulfed in fire or take God's word, which he can speak to people, but sometimes his word appears like a person. Wait, so God's attributes have become new little gods? No, no, the biblical authors believe there's only one all-powerful God. But they're comfortable talking about them as different characters. Yeah, this is part of the way that the biblical authors portray the one God's complex um. identity. They're God's attributes and also distinct from God. Distinct from God and also God. Yes. Once we learn to spot- Yeah, you have to laugh yourself, right? That way of talking about God's identity, you begin to see it all over the scriptures. In fact, you find it in the first sentences of the Bible that mention the Spirit of God. So the opening line of the Bible is pretty familiar. In the beginning, God created. But then keep reading. Who is it that we see within creation hovering over the waters? The Spirit of God. 
Yeah, so the spirit refers to God's personal presence and energy that we Couldn't the spirit be something metaphysical that God created? God doesn't just create three-dimensional meta, as you already said, it is beyond that. Even modern day science will talk about multiple dimensions, etc, etc. Why cannot the spirit be a metaphysical extension, a metaphysical creation of God? Why does it have to be equal to God? He can interact with Why? here within creation. If he created angels, if he created demons, can't he create a spirit? So the Bible can refer to God's spirit he as soul. distinct from God. Distinct from God and also God. God. It's God's spirit. And while this sounds strange from our point of view, this complexity is what the biblical authors are trying to get us to see. So we've looked at God's attributes and- If they really tried you to see that, wouldn't they just have written Trinity? Now let's Would make our so last easy. stop exploring God's complex identity in the Hebrew scriptures with a character called the Son of Man. So yeah. in the Bible, there's only one God that people are to worship, which makes this story in the book of Daniel really surprising. Daniel has a dream about a human figure called the Son of Man, which means a member of humanity. And Daniel dreams about this human getting elevated on a cloud, up and then higher up. Up into God's space. Yes, and then this human sits at the right hand of God's heavenly throne, and all humanity worships this human alongside God. A human where I expect to see God. Yeah, this human is a part of God's identity. This vision is about the climactic hope of the whole biblical story. God and humanity become one so they can rule the world together as one. So the Son of Man is distinct from God and also God. How does it exactly. even make sense? So, God is already ruling over everything. It's his creation. He doesn't need humans to rule with him. Think back over everything we've looked at. So In the Hebrew man. scriptures, God's identity is complex. And so, when Jesus' followers encountered God as the Father, Son, and the Spirit, they already had categories for how these could all be the one God of the Bible. Okay, uh, let's talk about that. Wrong. Okay. Jesus taught to worship the Father. This is what those apostles would have been exposed to. So, in what the New Testament, about? we're introduced to Jesus of Nazareth. And he's human, but way more. His favorite title to call himself was the Son of Man. The figure in Daniel's vision. And the claim is that he is this complex God become human to unite other humans with God. Okay, so the Gospels portray Jesus as fully human. And it couldn't be an analogy that a man that actually followed God's commandments would end up in the kingdom of heaven. As Yahweh, the couldn't God of be, Israel. Right? Jesus went around saying and doing things that only Yahweh can do, like forgiving people's sins or calming the chaotic waters. So they're saying Jesus is a human, distinct from God, and also God. Yeah, and that might sound crazy. Yeah, it does sound absolutely crazy, because what you're describing is miracles. And if you look into the prophets, many prophets had the ability of miracles. That doesn't make them God. Unless you've been reading the Hebrew scriptures, which prepared you for it. And then check this out. So Jesus' first man. followers, the apostles, talked about his identity using the language of God's attributes. They called Jesus the glory of God, or the apostle Paul called Jesus the wisdom of God, or John opens his gospel calling Jesus the word of God through whom the world was created. And then he says, the Yeah, of course they will call him the glory of God, the word of God, even if God sent Jesus, which the Bible claims as well. So if God sends Jesus, then of course Jesus will come with the message of God and therefore can be considered the word of God. Word was with God sure. and was God. Okay, I get what they're doing and it hurts my brain. Totally. And if you want to totally. spin your brain even more, consider <laughs> yeah. this. Jesus, who's portrayed as God become human, would talk to God as a distinct person. And when he did, he called him Father. Yeah, how about we stop right there and acknowledge for a second that Jesus prayed to the Father. Why does it now have to be a distinct person? Can't it just be Jesus praying to the Father, to God? Not referring to an abstract force or energy. He was talking so, about a personal being uh, that you can relate uh, to. There's a lot of personal images of God in the Bible. Ruler, creator, exactly. judge. But Jesus consistently referred to God as my Father. Jesus yes. experienced God sure. as a source of infinite love. He said, sure. the Father has loved me since before the creation of the <clears throat> world. Apparently, Jesus- Yeah, which means that the Father is eternal and his love is eternal as well. Knew the Jesus Father understood that. As an eternally others-centered, life-giving being. 
Right, like in the story about Jesus' baptism, when the father says from heaven, this is my son whom I love. And then keep reading, in that story, the person who brings that message of love from the father to the son is the spirit of God. So we've talked about God's spirit. Here within creation, it's through the spirit that we interact with the divine. Yeah, and the same was true for Jesus. Okay, that through might the spirit, totally be, he, even if we imagine the spirit as some sort of connection between God and us. Let's just use the example of the internet. Right here, I have my phone. It has YouTube here, a little program, and it can receive videos. I can watch videos here that come to me through thin air, supposedly. They come to me through 4G. So let's just imagine the spirit as a 4G technology, or within Islam, I know that the Holy Spirit is seen as the angel Gabriel. Be that as it may, it is some sort of creation that God can use to communicate with us within this three-dimensional fabric of time. Why does it now have to be a trinity? Experience the Father's Why? love. But it didn't stop there. Jesus promised that through him, the Spirit would go out and share the Father's love with all humanity and with all creation. So it can look okay. like these are three distinct gods, but in some way that transcends my view of reality, they're also one. Right. This is what later followers Yeah, of but you don't even get it. Jesus called and nobody the Trinity. Does. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are the one God of the Bible. I could see how they got there. But this isn't just a philosophy puzzle. To describe God as a triunity is to claim that the universe is held together by an eternal community of love. Which is something that I can't really understand. But the God of the Bible isn't a being that you understand. The point is to know and be known by this God so that we can participate in his love. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Honest opinion, as always, I think this video was worse than the last Trinity video. They didn't do a good job for me. It was kind of cringy, very childish, like explaining it to a child, but in the end, nobody gets it. It's a mystery anyways. They ended it with, you have to know God in his Trinity in order to receive his love, even though we cannot find that statement in the Bible either. So matter of fact, the more videos I watch about the Trinity, the less I understand it and the less appealing it gets as well. I haven't found one explanation that is logically consistent within any type of worldview. Nevertheless, as I said in the beginning, if you want me to react to Trinity videos, I will continue, of course, and who knows, maybe learn something on the way. I'm not ignorant that way, I'm just a human, I might be wrong. As for right now, I'm sticking with one God. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you very much. As always, may one God bless you all. Much love and peace.